Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over automations, how to set them up and how to customize them. So from the dashboard, we're going to scroll over to the left and this sub menu will pop up and we're going to click on automations. So in the previous video, I showed you how to use the template editor, how to create these emails. And I showed you how to customize using template tags and even customizing some of those template tags. Now we're going to take those email templates that we have and create a new automation. So I've got a few here. We wanted to show you that you can, you'll be able to see them for different marketplaces. Uh, you can have multiple emails in here or multiple automations in here at one time. So let's go to a brand new one. Now, right here, we've got some pre-made automations, but we're going to go blank. Now we've got two things in here. You have a trigger and you've got a filter. You've got triggers. Email opened, order shipped, order delivered, order refund, order returned. So for example, we're gonna start with order shipped. That's the default one right here. What that means is the trigger is once an order has shipped, what happens then? Do we wait or do we immediately send an email? Now, if you wanna wait one day or a couple of days, whatever, you certainly have that ability. You can wait all the way up to 30 days. For an order shipped, let's go directly into sending an email. So in the previous video, we created a template shipped email. All we have to do is click that one and confirm. So for this automation, once we turn, once we turn it on, as soon as an order is shipped, we're going to send an email. The email is about, hey, this order has just shipped. Now, filters means we're going to pull people out of a, uh, out of the order bucket. Meaning, if somebody ordered a product. Let's go in here and let's add something. Let's say, let's wait seven days, hit confirm, and then we're gonna send another email. Let's say somebody ordered a product, it shipped, they got this email. Now let's say they got it, they didn't like it, they changed their mind for whatever reason, they returned it and got a refund. If they got a refund, they're filtered out, meaning they're not going to get this email if they got the refund before the seven day period. Does that make sense? Now you can turn that off in your settings. And I'm going to show you that in a, in a, in a second. Um, now we've got discounts on here to show you a couple of things right now, your discount, meaning if anybody bought the product with less than a 20% discount, if your discount is less than 20%, then they won't get this email. Now you can certainly edit this for, for multiple reasons. You can do less than, equal to, greater than. For example, if you wanted to pull everybody out that got a greater than 20%, you hit confirm. So that means that if somebody got a 25% discount or a 50% discount, this automation would not be sent to them. Now the only time that you really wanna have that discount filter set in there is when you're asking for a review. So let's say, let's say they got, um, let's say that you were running a promotion and, and they were, you were doing a lightning deal and they got the product for 50% off. They're not going to get this automation at all. But these two emails right here, let's say these are customer service. Let's say the first one is, Hey, just let you know it's shipped. It's going to be here in a few days. Here's your order ID. Here's a link to contact us. If you have any questions, the second one that comes in seven days, Hey, I just want to let you know, uh, here are some specific care instructions on this product, meaning maybe it has to be washed a certain way. Maybe it has to be set up a certain way. That information you want to give to people regardless of what discount that they got uh, because it's customer service. It's there to help complete the order and have the greatest experience possible with your product. But let's say this is once the order is delivered. So we're going to delete everything out of here again. Now, once it's delivered, you can send another email and it says, hey, just thanks. It looks like your order is delivered. If you have any problems with the packaging, the product, anything, if there's any defects, shoot us a message and we'll replace the product for you uh, as soon as possible. And then maybe you wait. Depending on your product is how long you want to wait. For example, if you have, um, if you're just selling crew socks, 
I like using that example because it's a very basic product. They're not compression socks. There's really not a lot of instructions that need to, 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 um, to give somebody socks. If they're just regular cotton socks, there's not a lot of care instructions. Most people know how to use socks. Um, but let's say, so you wouldn't wait a long time to ask for a review. Maybe you wait four or five days. But let's say it's a supplement. And let's say it's a, it's a workout supplement. And let's say on the bottle and in your instructions, you're like, please wait 21 days to see results. You don't want to ask for a review five days later because you're already because they're not going to see any results and they're going to be unhappy when you're asking for them for a review and they barely started to use the product. So let's say, for example, that you're telling people to wait 21 days to see results. I would shoot them a message 29 or 30 days later. So once they get this email, it's going to wait 21, 29 days in between and then send another one asking for a review. This is when you would want to add your discount filter. So if they got it at anything more than a 20% discount, you don't want to ask them for a review because in the past we've seen where Amazon takes that as you are trying to incentivize the review somehow. Um, and we don't want to do anything to raise any concerns within Amazon. Again, this is all suggestions. This is your business. That's a business decision you're going to make on your own, but that's how you set up your discount filter. Now you can do other things as well. So you can set up different marketplaces. So if you want this marketplace, if you only want these messages to go to United States customers and Canadian customers, then you just click these two. Obviously, if you want to send uh, an automation for all of your uh, order shipped to Mexico, you want that email in Spanish. So you wouldn't send the, the, the same email that you have here that you would to another uh, another marketplace, even if you're sending products to Italy, if you're sending follow-up messages to Italy, for example, you don't want this in that message in Spanish. Different channels as well. So for example, you can set up a, um, a filter for sending out a certain follow-up sequence only for fulfilled by merchant or fulfilled by Amazon. You can set this up by different SKUs as well. So if you have a lot of SKUs, for, for example, let's go back to socks. Let's say I have several different colors, several different sizes. The amount of SKUs can quickly add up. Let's say I've got one common word in my SKUs, and that word is sock. Setting up a SKU filter like this, a positive match for the keyword sock, this will own this. This is telling the system we're only going to send this to. For all, we're only going to send this automation for SKUs with the keyword sock in the SKU. Now you can also put multiple, um, you can put multiple keywords in here. You want to just use what we call a pipe separator. And Now that's going to pull only those, it's going to filter out all the orders with just those keywords in there. You can also do the same thing for ASINs. ASINs here, if you only want to send out a certain automation for a certain kind of product, you can just put your ASINs in here. You just separate them by a comma. Now you don't have to do all of these filters. You can just do one or two. You don't have to do any. These are just different options for you. If you want to just go, if you have a lot of products that are very similar, uh, like my product, I've got about eight products that are all the same type of product. If I wanted to just type in, if all my products were socks, the word sock is in the title on Amazon, it's only going to filter for those, those products right there. Shipping country, obviously right here, United States, Canada, Mexico, you can filter that as well. Item price. Uh, so you can do equal, less than, greater than. Now, if you know you're going to run a special promotion on a certain type of product, again, let's say it's a lightning deal. Let's say that you know that this product, your socks are only going to run $9.99. And you don't want anybody else to get these messages about this product at $9.99. Maybe you want to send some specific content based on that. You can set your item price as well. And then the final one, which... Uh, it sounds a little complicated, but it's not. This is your repeated buyer filter. 
So what's great about this is if you have a consumable product, um, again, let's say it's a workout supplement. Let's say it's creatine pills, workout supplement. And let's say if somebody buys it for the first time ever, you want to click on first purchase because you can send out specific content. If they're buying it for the first time ever, let's assume that they know nothing about creatine pills. And that's really great because you can give some really great basic information. But let's say they bought this product at least three times and higher, three, four or five times. Let's say they keep buying it, they're subscribed to it, they get it every month. Maybe you send specific content on how to use that product. Maybe it's the, maybe it's not pills, maybe it's creatine powder and you can give them different information like, hey, here's a couple of recipes on how to substitute flour for creatine powder. Um, I'm not a cook, don't ask me for those recipes, um, but that's just another example of delivering some specific content using the repeated buyer filter. Now, once you have these set up, just like your email templates, you want to organize them, organize these. Com marketplace, socks. And hit save. Now, once you've hit save, that doesn't mean it's turned on. You still, it's still paused by default. You can add specific tags in here too, because once you start having multiple products, different types of brands, different marketplaces, you're going to have a lot of automations in here stack up. So an easy way to, to, to find these is you can add a tag. Socks. Hit done. Socks hit the color, hit save. So then you see it right here and then turn it on. You can turn these off, turn these on. If you realize I've got to make some, I've made some changes on my listing. I've made some changes in my product. I need to change. I need to pause these so I can change my automations. You can turn each one off and on, or you can hit this one, right? You can, if they're all off, you can hit that button right there. And then lastly, you've got a couple of things. You can monitor the performance of your automations individually. And again, this is this is just for demonstration purposes. We're not using anybody's uh, information. And you can go in here and edit these as well. And you can also make a duplicate copy just like you can the email templates. Just to make sure once you've made any changes, you hit save. And if you're unhappy with a template, you can just delete it. Click the trash can, hit confirm, and it's gone. So that's everything about automations. If you got any questions, please let us know. Yeah.